Welcome to Oakdale Bible Baptist Church. My name is Brother Elvin Mayo. I am the pastor. We will continue today to look into the doctrine of civic duty. We will be on segment three, segment three, and we will look at ruling and serving. Again, looking at the, uh, the verse from which we build this doctrine, this doctrine of civic duty, in Luke in chapter 20, in verse 25, as our Lord is speaking uh, of the role of government uh, to God. He says, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. And so we see that there are some things which belong to Caesar. Now we've covered a few. We've covered prayers, and we've covered obedience. Uh, and now we will cover uh, ruling and serving. That is to say, duties of rulers and duties of servants. Now, as we're in the book of Romans, in chapter 13, continuing to read there, I will read a few verses and then we'll try to tie all of this together, the duties of rulers and the duties of servants. Uh, in chapter 13 of the book of Romans, uh, beginning in verse 3, and I will read through verse 5. Uh, Paul here speaks, he says, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For it beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, you must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. In other words, not simply because the governments of men have power, but also because we believe uh, that we are doing right for righteousness' sake. In other words, for God's sake. Uh, we'll go back to verse 3, to the very first statement. It says, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Now let me stop here for a moment. This obviously speaks to the duties of rulers. I mean, it says for rulers. But if you are in a nation which has a representative form of government, if you're in the United States, that's you. It's also many, many other governments on the earth right now throughout the history of man. Uh, it has not been the case until the last two, uh, about 200 years or a little longer, uh, and representative governments have grown. If you are in a representative form of government, I submit to you that you have the duties of rulers. You have the duties of kings and of queens. All of the things that all of the rulers of the land were to do and to ensure have fallen upon your shoulders. It matters not if you don't want the duties, you have them. Uh, and so we then, who in this nation elect our representatives, are not electing our rulers. We are electing our servants. If you are an elected official and you think of yourself as a ruler, I remind you that that's an arrogant outlook. And in fact, you are a servant of the people. Now, uh, since we are rulers of our own land, let us look at our responsibilities. It says, for rulers are not a terror to good works. So first, we should be careful of interfering with good works. We should be careful that we don't get on board uh, with a big push for new legislation that would interfere uh, with, for example, the raising of a family or with the ability of, of a family to open a small business, labor, and make a living for their family. We have to take care uh, that we don't put burdens upon people for we're not to be a terror to good works. That does not mean that I'm against regulation, that I'm against legislation, etc. I'm not. I simply say we have to take care of what we will and will not support. Now, this means that we have to be observant. This means that we have a duty to look at what's going on, look at the things that are being passed. In other words, to observe that thing that we hate so much, politics. Yes, we have a duty to watch, to observe. We have a duty to look at, at, at those whom we have hired, and, and that's what we've done when we've elected. Those who we have hired to represent us, we have a duty to look and see if they are doing our bidding. And so I do believe that you should maintain a watch on what's going on at a local, at a state, at a federal level. That doesn't mean I think you should be consumed, but I do think you should watch. And I will also say you have a duty to vote. And by that, I mean a duty to vote uh, as you believe that God would have you to vote. Now, for heads of the house, 
heads of, heads of households, I submit to you that you have a duty to make sure your whole house knows how the house stands. Uh, this is perhaps an old or in your mind an antiquated concept, but I submit to you again, it's Christian. It's right, if you really are the head of the house, you have the duty of making sure that the whole house knows where the house stands. Uh, and so we vote accordingly. Uh, again, it's not an option, it is a duty. Now the second part of this, uh, it says we're not a terror to good works, but to the evil. We are a people who should stand for law and order. Uh, why? Because God stands for law and order. Uh, because God is not the author of confusion, neither should we favor chaos and confusion. But we should favor law and order, a well-regulated society, but not an overly regulated society. One which allows good works to continue without interference, but one which is a terror to good works. And while I'm on this subject, I'll, I'll uh, hit one more thing. Perhaps you get a letter in the mail, and it's a summons, and it says that you are summoned to jury duty. Should you comply with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. The last thing that we would want if we really support law and order is to have people who are uh, serving as jurors who are the only ones who can't escape their duties. Rather, we should have uh, people with a good moral conscience serving on, on juries uh, so that the guilty are held guilty and the innocent are let free. Uh, we should never evade jury duty, regardless of the fact that it will cost you money. It will cost you time. It is inconvenient. But if you really support uh, a lawful society and an orderly society, I believe it is your duty to fulfill your jury duty. Now I'll move on to verse 4. Speaking again of the government, it speaks of the king or the government in verse 4. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. Now I would cover this uh, this statement of bearing the sword. Uh, he does not say in here, Paul does not say that he bears a stick. Uh, he does not say that he bears a rope, uh, but rather the sword. This definitely implies lethal force. Governments do have, or I should say do wield lethal force. Now this is on two levels. There's the civil and the international. As, as far as uh, the wielding of, of force, of lethal force, uh, on the civil levels. I, I will carry you back to the Genesis in chapter 9, and, and I will read verse 6, but before I do, I'll tell you what I'm reading. When Noah uh, got off of the ark, God made a covenant with Noah. This covenant was for all of mankind. Now this is far before Moses. This is not for Jews only. This is for all of mankind. We all came from Noah. In chapter 9 and verse 6, as part of this covenant, God made this statement, Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. Not by God, not by chance, not by wild animals, but by man. In making this statement, God has required of man that he uh, would judge and execute murderers. This is not an option. This is not a debate. This is a simple statement from God's word that capital punishment is to be executed upon murderers. That should end the debate for a Christian. He says, for in the image of God made he man. Uh, God takes this very seriously. Uh, and so we see the bearing of the sword in civil affairs by the government, even from that verse. And now I move to uh, a very thorny issue. On the international level, should Christians join the military in a time of war? Should they be a pacifist? Should they uh, enroll themselves as a conscientious objector? Well, let me, read the let me read the rest of this again, and we'll come to our conclusion. It says, For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. I do not believe this is limited to those who do evil in civil affairs. If a nation were to come against our nation with a desire to conquer and to do evil to the inhabitants of it, how could 
the king? How could the government uh, be indeed a minister of God or revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil if he would not even defend his people against those who would do evil to them? And so I do believe that a government has a duty, a duty to defend its people, including in wartime. I believe that's scriptural. Now, because of that, that means that this government must maintain some sort of armed force. Furthermore, I believe that if we say that the government should defend its people, but we're not going to do it, we become hypocrites. And if we as Christians believe it's the government's role to defend its people, then we must be willing to participate. I do not believe in pacifism to the extreme that a person will not uh, support their nation in a time of war. I do believe that if the government calls upon you for military service, that you should go. I believe if the, if the government calls upon your sons for military service, they should go. I believe that that is part of our Christian duty. I do not uh, believe that you must go into the military. I do not believe that you must be a law enforcement officer. Uh, I do not believe that's so. But I do believe that you must be willing to if it falls uh, your chance to go. And so then, uh, regarding our duties, both as rulers and as servants, as rulers, again, uh, we are not to be a terror to good works, but we are to be a terror to evil. We are to support law and order. We are to vote. Uh, we are to uh, submit ourselves to jury duty when it is needed. Uh, I believe we should support those that we elect. I believe we should communicate with them. This is all part of sound government. Uh, we should, again, watch what's going on. Furthermore, I believe that in supporting our government, we should support uh, both our military and our law enforcement officers. That means supporting them with prayers. That means uh, actually being willing to be a member. Uh, and that means cooperating with them uh, as required. Uh, and so these are the duties. And, and again, I know this is not an in-depth study, uh, but these are the quick duties that I see in an overview uh, of our duties as rulers and as servants as part of our doctrine of civic duty. Uh, now this will conclude the third segment of, of our study, and we will continue the next time uh, with the subject Get ready. You're going to like this one. Of taxes. Until we meet then, goodbye. Amen.